So every week for a while now, over a year for sure, we've had uh, Mr. Marcos Mejia who comes over to the show. And what we do is we end up again, spending some time and talking about what's going on with COVID. Um, and today we are once again having that conversation to be able to get an update as to, again, what are the good news or the bad news, whatever you have for us. Thank you for being here. I would say I have a lot of good news for, for this session, Rafael. As of today, more than 1 million doses have been administered in Sonoma County. It's almost 1, 000, uh, almost 1 million, 3,000. 80.2% 80, 80 of the county's eligible population is fully vaccinated and 7.4% is partially vaccinated and 63% uh, of the eligible population have received boosters. These are great defenses against COVID. Our focus remains on booster shots and pediatric vaccina vaccinations and encouraging everyone to wear a high quality mask when appropriate. Boosters provide uh, protection against the worst outcomes of COVID, which are severe illness, hospitalizations, and death. People who aren't vaccinated here in the county are almost 15 times more likely to be hospitalized uh, if they get COVID and almost 11 times more likely to die. Even though uh, the numbers continue to decrease, the unvaccinated people receive the, 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 the hardest outcomes of COVID as it has been throughout the pandemic. Uh, the, the numbers continue to drop uh, and, and now we have 26.2 uh, new, case, new cases, it's a, it's a rate for daily cases for every 100,000 uh, population in the county. This measure is taken uh, in a period of seven days, so week by week. And this is our second week below 50, which uh, uh, now situates us as a moderate uh, level of spread of the virus in the county. But that doesn't mean that it's gone. It's still here and it's still affecting uh, people who uh, is unvaccinated, especially, but also people who has uh, an underlying condition or, uh, or uh, elderly people, especially, uh, are the most impacted. Our, our case rate for unvaccinated individuals is 56 per every 100,000 compared with 23.3 for, vac uh, for vaccinated residents. Our overall testing positivity rate is 6.4% and our equity metric testing positivity rate is a little bit higher, normally 7.2%. This is uh, for uh, people with the lowest income in the county. Also, the hospitalizations continue to drop uh, there are 44 persons uh, with COVID-related symptoms in the hospitals in the county as of Monday. Eight of these persons are uh, COVID patients in the ICU beds, and all of those persons are unvaccinated people. There have been 53 COVID-related deaths reported uh, since uh, December 1st, with 36 of them reported in January and 10 more during February. Uh, the county residents 65 and older have accounted for 74% of, of the 472 uh, COVID-related deaths that we have so far along the pandemic. Uh, the new case rates in the county show the continued disproportionate impact on communities of color with uh, case rates for Pacific Islanders and Latinx residents 50% higher than for the numbers that correspond to white and Asian residents. The vaccination rates, especially booster shots, are lagging in those communities. While 63% of the eligible residents in the county have received a booster, just 40% of the eligible Latinx residents have received one. 70% of eligible white and Asian residents have received booster shots. So when we compare, there's a, there, there's a big gap between these two social groups. The County Equity Outreach Team remains committed to working closely with our community-based organizations to engage with the pockets of our community that have lower vaccinations and booster rates. Now, changing news, uh, changing years here, just, uh, I want to announce that California formally shifts uh, to an endemic strategy. Uh, uh, um, California became the first state to formally shift to an endemic approach to the coronavirus with Governor uh, Gavin Newsom's announcement of a plan that emphasizes prevention and quick reaction to outbreaks 
over mandated maskings and business shutdowns. The strategy will treat the virus as manageable risk that will remain with us for some time, if not forever, rather than an emergency. The next phase in the pandemic playbook includes measures to promote vaccines, stockpile medical supplies, quickly spot surges and or variants, and mount an aggressive assault on disinformation. This is a cancer and we need to remove that cancer because it doesn't allow progress. Uh, the coronavirus has infected at least one of five Californians and claimed the lives of more than 83,000 state residents. A uh, disease uh, reaches the endemic stage when the virus still exists in a community but becomes manageable as uh, immunity builds, which is where we are now with, uh, with a higher percentage of immunity. Uh, I mentioned all the metrics that we have from registered information. We also have the people who got infected. We have the numbers. They also have some immunity. And we are uh, sadly not receiving, uh, we were not expecting really to receive a lot of uh, um, reports of the positive test that people is doing at home. All those rapid tests at home, those ant antigen, antigen tests, um, well, uh, people is not reporting that. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, again people to report it to 707-565-4771. Uh, 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 where uh, you can uh, let us know uh, about your result. This is very useful uh, to bring resources to people that need it and, and to, to contain uh, the infection wherever it presents. Okay, so going back to the subject, the state is using an acronym for its new approach, it's SMARTER, and uh, that stands for mask, awareness, readiness, uh, testing, education and medications or treatments related to COVID. Um, okay, some uh, key highlights is that the plan will create a special office of community partnerships that would send hundreds of workers into immigrant, disadvantaged and other hard to reach communities to combat this information and offer access to care. This is throughout California. We will uh, talk more in detail when this is implemented locally bring you more uh, specific information about our teams. We have a, a, a office on equity, and we also have an outreach team, and, and they're, they've been working along the pandemic, but uh, we'll see what's their, their focus once we officially embark into an endemic state. Mm -hmm. that's, that's still in the future. Um, then um, another news is that om the Omicron surge accounts for more US deaths than the Delta wave. And this is um, because Omicron peak is behind us, but the deaths which often lack cases by several weeks have surpassed the numbers from the Delta wave and are still increasing in much of the country. Since November 24, when South Africa first reported the Omicron variant, the United, St the United States have confirmed more than 30 million new infections and more than 154,000 new deaths. Um, in comparison from August 1st to October 31st, a similar duration uh, covering the worst of the Delta surge in the United States, the country confirmed uh, almost 11 million new infections and 132,000, uh, a little bit more than that, 132, 616 new deaths, but still the Omicron is much higher. And then finally, I want to talk about the new law that requires companies to, pro to provide basic leave for COVID. Uh, this is the third year that this program is implemented. And this uh, latest one, uh, Governor Newsom signed it on February 9th, and it's, it took effect on February 19, just a few days ago. It's retroactive to January 1st, and it, it, it targets um, all companies with employees with more than uh, with more than 25 employees. Uh, and this is to give workers up to two weeks of paid uh, time off if they get sick from the coronavirus or if they have to take care of a relative or a child. Uh, the new law gives workers up to one week of paid time off uh, if they get the coronavirus. And to get the second week off, uh, they have to present a positive test, normally it's an antigen test, upon requirement of their uh, em employer. And normally employers will do that because 
that's the requirement to pay the second week. Um, if the employee fails to take such a test required by the employer, the employer may deny pay for any leave taken after the time the employer provides the test. The employers must pay for and provide the test. Uh, workers can use the 40 hours of paid leaps for a range of COVID-related reasons, including symptoms, quarantine and isolation, vaccine appointments, or caring for a family member with COVID-19 or a child whose school or plates of care is closed due to COVID-19. And that concludes my report for today. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time and being here with us. Uh, my only two comments are here, and again, a lot of people, adults, are choosing not to vaccinate their children, and you know we would hate for them to later on regret not having done so, knowing the fact that the people who are getting extremely sick, the people who are passing away, are people who are unvaccinated. And the other one is uh, adults may say, it's my body and it's my right whether to get vaccinated or not. And the only comment is, and we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, is um, then please make sure that you have, especially if you have a family, make sure that you have good life insurance. Because it may be your choice, but if you pass away, right, the community taxpayers will have to take on the responsibility to provide support to your family. And that also is not fair. And the last thing I will say is it is sad that this country, although we have the, and, and this is what shows that we are still an empire and who knows for how long, but we got the vaccine and instead of sharing the technology, the knowledge out there with other countries, we are gonna continue to deal with new, um, what is it called, COVID. Um, we had Delta, now we have Omicron, we'll have more because we fail to share this knowledge with the rest of the planet. And it's gonna take uh, the, the uh, World Health Organization, was just saying yesterday, it's gonna take until 2024 for many people in other countries, uh, such as places in Africa to get vaccinated. And so as long as people are not vaccinated, this will continue to be an issue. So we have to be conscious that companies like Pfizer, and Moderna are refusing to share this knowledge, even though taxpayers from the United States gave them the money to do the research. Therefore, it should be open knowledge, but yet they're not willing to share it. So we cannot complain that the pandemic and the masks and everything are gonna be requirements for a while in the future possibly, they're talking about a four shot possibly in the fall, but we cannot complain as long as we are allowing this government to not force companies like, like Moderna and Pfizer to share the knowledge that we are all paid. And with that, I wanna thank you, uh, Senor Mejia, for always providing uh, reliable information uh, from the County of Sonoma, and I look forward to our next dialogue. Thank you. Thank you so much, until next week.